Hey, Greg. How are you doing? Not bad, Jack. What's shaking over there? You're in the future. Yeah, that's right. Afternoon here, morning time, fresh for you. And do you know what? I've just got to say, um, anyone who views our videos normally, well, no, I'm quite demure. I'm quite, I'm plain miserable most of the time. All day I've been chipper. I've been sprightly. Because I know I was talking to you, so I had to G myself up. And I feel good. It feels Excellent. good to be here. Excellent. It's been ages since well, I, I saw you in person, but you know, I feel yes. as though I've been very close to you this whole time because of your, you've been on my feeds nonstop. I've seen you with Fishman, I've seen you doing the Wildwood stuff, I've seen you everywhere. So I'm glad that you are active as ever. Well, it has been uh, an interesting past year, of course, but uh, mm -hmm. luckily because of the, um, you know, my relationships with uh, Wildwood and with Fishman and then being able to, you know, have my drummer live in the house with me, my son, uh, we've been able to do a bunch of stuff uh, live streaming wise and with the able assistance of uh, Ryan, who you met just moments ago from Fishman yes. that helps us out with all of our- Very kind stuff. gent. Re indeed, remotely, we've been able to, we've been able to do a lot of stuff, which has been good. So mm -hmm. it's been an interesting year, but it's, uh, you know, you yeah. gotta just keep on keeping on, as they say. Absolutely. Lest we get into the COVID stuff, but um, we had a we had a chat with Andy Wood a couple of days ago as well, and um, I said the same to him. It's just been great that he, like you, have just been absolutely pummeling out the content. And it's yes. you know it not it's not easy for everyone to have adapted to that. Did you find it a little strange at first? I mean, you're a video guy anyway, so you're used to to posting stuff regularly. But did you find the shift to I better you know post even more frequently and post more stuff out there? Did that come across a little strange to you, or just well, I guess the, the difference the for me was was just getting over the technical hurdles of doing it from home. Because obviously when I go out to Wildwood, everything is set, ready to go, and somebody's doing the audio, someone's doing the video. I just have to sit down and be a wiseacre and play some git fiddle. And when we adjusted to doing stuff from the homestead here, um, started out, you know, and I'm a technical, I, I don't want to say Giant. maroon. But uh, but when it comes to uh, messing around with technology, even though I am Gen X, Jack, I am yep. boomer when it comes to technology. <laughs> so, uh, but we, you know what, we worked around it. We, we gradually uh, started upping everything, and including, you know, getting fiber optic uh, connections so that, you know, our connectivity was legit, both for audio and for visual. And then uh, gradually having enough inputs and being able to interface with a, you know, a DAW on the on the doggone thingamabobberoony and, you know, coupling everything through OBS to be able to have good video and audio and all that kind of sweet schnikey multiple camera like a little foot switch where I can go between cameras and so I it's would say stuff. it wasn't it, it wasn't so much the coming up with the content it was the overcoming the technical hurdles to make sure that it wasn't amateur hours you know what I mean. Yeah, I do know what you mean, and that can be the uh, the very much an uphill battle for a lot of people. But the thing I love about what you're doing is that every day I see it, it just looks like you've just sat down and you're pumping out the jams, as you might say. That's pretty, it's just that's completely much what's happening. It's natural. There's none of that technical uh, crap in the way, so that's good to see. Well, I, I kind of keep it separate from like, if I'm doing an Instagram thing, it, it's literally just the iPad or the phone. I'm not going through, I mean, occasionally it'll be going through the full system. Uh, but I try to keep that just organic and, and, and my phone does a really weird thing. If, if it's, if it's sitting on like the music stand or in the, you know, the, the, uh, the corner of the, the laptop, it does this real weird high end every now and again. And I'll hear that and I'll be like, nah, screw it. Just keep it in. So I like to keep those real organic and just as they happen type of a thing. And my son is always screaming at me, dad. We have all of this stuff. Why don't you do it? I was like, yeah, but I don't, this is not for that. I'm just doing it for the hell of it, you know? And that's literally how those things are. It's, it's, I was describing this to someone the other day. When I do those Instagram things, it's more of a, uh, uh, a cathartic thing for me. If I can p play something for 60 seconds and not want to retch when I hear it back, that's <laughs> a good exercise for me. So if I do that every day, I'm fine tuning as I go along, as well as like I have, have a new idea every day. It, it, it catalogs it, it provides some fun content for folks, and it keeps me on, yeah. my, keeps me on my Oh, you, I know, you know this obviously, but I can't express to people watching this video enough how, much, how true that is what you just said. Anytime you sit down to record a video, as candid as you think it might be, retching is a part of the process of watching it back. 
and it's yeah. so hard to just decide to press the button and publish it. It's oh, I gotta do it. Yeah, yeah. It's Absolutely. horrible. But that's the nature of the beast. That's the job. That's why we're here. That's right. So, Greg, I asked Andy this, um, Andy Wood, earlier this week. What's the music scene like out there right now? Because we've got a lot of UK viewers, obviously, and things are just creeping out. We're just about on the cusp to get live gigs and things happening again. But where you are, what's been going on lately and what's the future looking like? Uh, well, interestingly enough, I, my, the most gigs I have lined up are for November in the UK, which I hope will actually transpire. I was very skeptical ah. as to whether they were going to transpire or not. But now it's been weird. It's, I think everyone was kind of getting their mind around, okay, well maybe September things will happen. So I've got like some festival things in September. Um, and then some people were asking about some, maybe some outdoor stuff in the summer. And that's kind of, you know, coming together a bit. But then all of a sudden, it seems like in the last couple of weeks, we were like, ah, screw it. Let's open everything up. And so it's everyone's kind of scrambling. Mm. And for me, it's been one of those things where I, I'm in no big hurry. You know what I mean? It's like uh, I've got enough stuff that I do that uh, I don't need to kind of, you know, and, every, <laughs> and I understand it because, you know, a lot of people who, who's, you know, the great majority of their income is gigging, you know, actually going on the road. To me, mm. it's part of the equation. So um it's yeah, not I totally get part it. of the equation so uh, yeah. i don't really need to you know do the elbowing out thing let's get on the road and blah, 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 blah. and because i i it's going to be interesting to see a couple different things one uh are venues going to try to shortchange people in terms of well you know we can't do the full money because you know or the other thing is you know seven people are are held for the same date it's gonna be hard to string gigs together um and then there's the whole idea of, um, you know, er everything's going to be full capacity. Well, I guess that last question has been answered. As people, I mean, I guess New York City just said, yeah, we're at 100% capacity for everything. So, you know, as long as it's Brian. safe and people aren't, you know, there isn't some kind of uh, backstep and, you know, whatever uh, might transpire as a resolve of, result of herd immunity or not, mm. uh, we shall see. But um, I'm just It's kinda... hard to plan, isn't it? But, you know, it would be great. I didn't realize that. I hope that we get to see you in November then. Fingers crossed. Yeah, I'm hoping so too. We were going to do a thing where uh, Josh Smith is coming over with Dudley and doing some stuff. And then uh, we're going to do some stuff together. And then we're going to go after that. So that, that's oh, the plan cool. anyway. So, so we'll, we'll see what shakes. Very cool. Well, that's great. It's, it's nice to finally speak with some positivity about this all, isn't it? It's been a long time coming, but now it's a little bit more like the, the yeah, light is there. It, it, the light is there, and it seems like it got drastically brighter in the last, like, two weeks. It's all of a sudden people are like, hey, guess what? You know, I think we're good. And we're like, really? Are we, are we good now? It's, it's bizarre. So we'll see. You know, I'm, I'm game for whatever, but uh, I'm in no big hurry to do anything uh, that doesn't need to be done <laughs> yeah it's gotta be, it's gotta be done right that's correct that's it that's it well you know what greg i think it's about time let's just let's just delve in shall we i've got one yes. of these fine specimens right here to anyone watching yes. this this is you know probably why you're here greg's just released the new reverend gristle 90 and yes. i've been very fortunate to spend a bit of time with um with this model all three of the of the colors are fantastic i've got to ask you before we get into it greg that fine blue specimen that you're holding there. I understand that we may be seeing a slightly different bluish hue. That's actually a little well, bit of a Yes, a rarity. this is actually, this was just a happy accident. The, the original color was this. And so right. this is the Tosa turquoise. Uh, and what happened was, is that about, it, it was maybe a year and a half ago, we had prototypes of the three different colors. This one. Uh, the gold that you're holding and in the black one. And uh, they had regular um, Reverend P90s in them. And so we, in lieu of voicing the pickups with Fishman. So right before COVID hit is like we had a couple trips out to, um, to Fishman to voice the pickups and get them in the ballpark. Um, but it was a long process. Obviously, with, with COVID hitting, you know, release dates were really more of a suggestion. So the guitars and the pickups were supposed to be out last summer at Summer Nam, which, of course, none of that stuff happened. So yeah. um, things were getting, you know, pushed back, understandably. No, you know, it was what it was. But when we finally mm. got around to saying, okay, well, now we've got the pickups from Fishman. 
we're ready to manufacture. Um, Ken from Reverend said, okay, well, we need X amount of the toast turquoise. We need X amount of, you know, the gold ones and X amount of the black ones. Well, the factory, it had been a year and a half since they'd done this color. And so when he said turquoise, they, they just went with whatever this color was, which was their standard turquoise. So oh, I um, see. Okay. So when, when Ken, you know, he's like, I got good news. I got bad news. The good news is the guitars came in the bed. And when I saw this color initially, I was a little put off because the, the, the view that he had of it, it looked more blue than turquoise. Right. And uh, it, and it was drastically <clears throat> different from the other one, which I'd been playing on live streams for you know all during, yeah, you yeah. know the COVID thing. People are getting excited. I can't wait to get that guitar in that color and that, that, that. And then I saw this color, but when I saw it in person, then I was like, man, this this is awesome. So it, it kind of worked as a good, you know, kind of sh- uh, limited edition, shall we say? So it's going to yeah. be available for the first several months of shipments, and then starting in September. The, to- the Tosa Turquoise will be available. So if you like this color, which is Bradford Beach Blue, Tosa is short oh, for okay. Wauwatosa, where I live. And okay. Bradford Beach is a, bre- it's a beach on Lake Michigan here, which the water looks amazingly like this. So I thought yeah, Bradford I Beach Yeah, I love blue. that keep- color. And I think yes. you know we've had a couple of those. So anyone who's gotten in there early has been lucky and has secured that. So what you've actually done, Greg, is you've given yourself a pension without even meaning to. Exactly. By that, that short little limited run, those things are going to be super special. Those are going to be gold dust. Well, we hope. We hope that's the case, Jack. Yeah. And speaking <laughs> of gold dust, this gold is a mighty fine hue. Yes. All the way. It is beautiful. All yes. up the back, back of the headstock, everything. Um, so I'm guessing, I don't want to put words in your mouth. I'd like to hear it from you. Where did the kind of initial inspiration for these P90 guitars come from? Was it another, you know, gold hued instrument? that kind of led you on this path or what did you want to achieve with this? Uh, absolutely. I, you know, I, I am a, a fan of uh, Gibson style instruments without doubt. Um, and I wanted, uh, but you know, I'm so used to playing tellies and mm. fender oriented type devices that I wanted the, um, uh, the sound and vibe, if you will, of maybe a G-flavored device, but with the ergonomics of, of more of um, a T-style instrument, but yeah, also with the, the, the tweaks that we did with the first Gristlemaster, like larger body, you know, the, uh, of course, the pickups, you know, the technology, the lock and tuners, the flatter radius, the bigger frets, all that kind of sweet shit. I mean, stuff. So, um... As a result, um, you know, I, I just approached Ken. I was like, Ken, what if we did another one with, you know, Gibson scale, set neck, put a Bigsby on it. Uh, I do like Bigsby's. I mean, it, I, I will put it this way. I really like Bigsby's when I played the Reverends because they tweak them in a way where they really work. I had a Reeves Gabrels uh, model uh, Space Hawk Reverend, and, um, and I loved it because the, the out of phase sound on that guitar is killer, and the humbuckers sound great too, but... It has a um, Mr. Wiggles on it, as I like to say, a, um, a big speed. But, and, and Reeves brought to the, to the Reverend Fold uh, a special spring that he likes to use on his big speeds, which he procured from his Schwinn bike, I guess, is the, is, as urban legend has it. And it's, uh, it allows you to do, you know, like warbles and all the stuff that you would want to do with a whammy bar. But, and the things, they actually stay in tune. I mean... All tremolo systems are going to be a little weird every now and again. Mm-hmm. But, you know, a lot of times um, in the past when I've played Bigsby's, both on old guitars and on newer guitars, it's it's a struggle. But with these, I'm like, this totally works. And plus, I like the sound of Bigsby's. Like, every time I would play a Les Paul with a Bigsby on, I was like, I don't even want to hit that thing. But, man, it sounds good. You know what I mean? So and it looks good, too. And it, and it looks good. Exactly. Yeah. So. Uh, I decided to go with the Bigsby on this model, and and there has been a little bit of pushback. Of course, my favorite, my favorite retort to any kind of, well, why don't you do this? I'm like, well, I'll tell you what, when you get your signature model, you can do whatever the hell you want. But for now, this is the way I wanted it, and that's the way it's coming. So, uh, it's great. It, the- it feels really good. And I mean, right. my my own little take on it was, um, you know, when I when I played these, they kind of feel like if the Gristle Master is the Speed Demon. This kind of feels like a little bit of a slower pace, a little bit of a rhythm machine as well. Yeah, yeah. And um, I remember hearing uh, Van Halen a quote where he said that this is like the break for him. You know, this is ah, to yeah, slow yeah, him yeah. down. 
So, you know, I guess maybe there's a little bit of that in there too. This, this just felt, this felt great to me to play more rhythmic stuff on and kind of just, you know, take my time a little bit and explore the great tones that this guitar's got. As the Gristle Master does as well, but that guitar is a little bit more um, kind of straight laced, fast paced, in my opinion. Was there any of that kind of intent behind the design for you as well? Did you just want a kind of different lane of playing out of this? Yeah, absolutely. I think when I play um, a guitar that's more of kind of a Gibson format, meaning, you know, the uh, set neck, um, Gibson scale type of thing, I, I definitely play different. You know, I, I'll do my more, I mean, not, I still do it on the other guitars, but with a, a little bit try more vibrato language stuff as far as the lead stuff is concerned and certainly more chunky oriented uh rhythm type of stuff as opposed although they sound great for funk too and and i love the sound of the neck pickup clean on this thing man it's glorious uh yeah. but it's also a slide machine for me as well uh right it, it, yeah. it gets that chunkier slide thing um which i'll probably end up playing slide mostly on on this thing now not that i don't enjoy playing it on the other one which i still do i have a you know I play both guitars all the time, depending on what I want to do. I've mostly been playing this one as of late, just because it sounds so damn huge. It just, you know, it I really play straight, yeah. the the, straight into the old caulk amp, and it's, it's kapow. So um, it it fills up a lot of space. But yeah, definitely, it's a it's a it's a it's a different mindset. You know, as you said, um, and, and Mr. Wiggles on there as well does. It is a break, but it, in, in terms of you know. Um, uh, uh, a comma, if you will, a comma maker in the in the great um, uh, uh, verbal onslaught, but musical verbal onslaught. But I do like the the fact that it's it's really good for the bends and 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 I and I really wanted that out of phase setting, which is an interesting an interesting thing because I like what really works well on the Space Hawk guitar uh, that they have is that you know because uh, Reverend puts that um, bass contour control. You can put on mm. the uh, out of phase setting, and then you can kind of dial in with that bass contour a, a more girthsome setting. Because a lot of times a straight out of phase sound, you know, it's it's kind of a polarizing thing, right? In, in comparison to the straight pickup sounds. But what I always liked was is the the Peter Green wiring of the mm -hmm. uh, of the out of phase setting, and if you grab either volume control when you're in that middle position with the fully and just back just off a skosh. Yeah. And all of a sudden it yeah. becomes this thicker, thicker thing. So when we were designing this pickups, I said, is there any way that what we could do is do a preset where we could dial in that sweet spot sound and just leave it? So that's what we did with these pickups. So when you're going to that out of phase sound, it's the rhythm, it's the neck pickup back just a hair. Just so uh, that you so, can okay. so, so you get that girthier sound. And that's why it's uh well, you know, it, took me, it took me a minute to realize what that was because I, I lifted that up and I thought, okay, that's doing something. And then realized obviously it was something to do with the middle position. And like you say, the, the out of phase sound, I guess, isn't entirely out of phase then. It's got a bit more fatness. Exactly. And it's kind of so like, there's, there's, it's, it's sorry, like you ahead. had a, a really nice little mid-range squawky boost pedal or something in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's, I, I haven't actually opened this up and looked at it, but, uh, and, you know, Ryan can correct me if he's listening, uh, Ryan for Fishman. But there, there's a thing where you can actually go in and tweak being as much as like a quarter roll off of the, of the volume of oh. the neck pickup. So it's adjustable in there. So they just said it the way I liked it and, and, and kept it. So when you buy a Gristle Master and you pop up that tone control in the middle position and you get that out of phase, that's, that's my preset. But you can go in and mess with it. Right. Okay. That's very cool. And in terms of the, the pickups themselves, then obviously that's kind of like a from the ground up design. What did you, what's your perfect P90 and how did you manage to cram it into this? Well, it's interesting because over the years, you know, I mean, I was always amazed when I'm doing videos at, at, at Wildwood and I'm playing all these different Les Pauls, right? You know, it's, it's a day, oh, it's Les Paul day. So I'm playing, you know, 25, 30 guitars, whatever the case may be. And you're like, oh, here's a custom shop. With PAFs, here's you know here's a custom shop with the you know Wildwood spec pickups. Here's a, here oh here's one with P90. I was always amazed that all the P90 guitars sounded so radically different to me. I mean it's like they could be like the real tubby sounding, and and way darker and real farty and and I'd be like wait a minute that's that's weird. And then I'd play an old guitar with P90s, mm -hmm. like well this is an entirely different beast altogether. 
And then I had a buddy of mine make me a prototype guitar for something we were messing around with locally here years ago. Uh, and it had three P90s in it. And I recorded a bunch with that guitar as well. And th those had, I think we had like Kleins in there or were they Lawlers? I think I had one with Lawlers and one with Kleins. And it was amazing to me just, and then with you, you know, messing around with the, uh, the screws going in and out, you could, you know, dial in different yeah. sounds and all this kind of stuff. So it was, it's been a weird thing with me with P90. It's like, I love the sound of, I remember, I, I viscerally, I remember years ago being a buddy of mine locally, uh, Bob Welch is his name. He always would play like Les Paul Jr.'s through, uh, through blonde basemen heads and 212 bottoms and and i would go out and i'd sit and be like this is the greatest sounding thing i've ever heard you know it's just because they just have a way of doing that overdrive thing and you back up and they clean up and so on and so forth and then there was the whole idea of you know like the lou reed rock and roll animal record with you know steve hunter and you'd listen to those those tones and it was just so awesome everyone always mentions leslie west and, I, and i'm ashamed that i didn't listen to much mountain back in the day it's like i had the climbing record my brother had the climbing record you know uh, but I wasn't a huge, you know, mountain fan. I just want, cause I like cream. And to me, they were like cream light. I'm sorry to say folks, but, uh, <laughs> um, I, I need full cream. So anyway, yeah. <laughs> be that as it may, I can see that you son of a bitch. Uh, but, uh, no, they were great in <laughs> retrospect. Of course, it's a different approach, but you know, you, you know, I'm, I'm kind of, a I see you thinking, I see you yeah. thinking, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Anyway. So, um, when I started playing with the, Reverend P90s, they were a different thing altogether, and there was a lot of character in the tone. So what I began to narrow in on is I like kind of a velvety, glassy with girth neck pickup sound, and I like kind of a squawky bridge pickup that does that almost kind of out of phasey thing. That you know what I mean? It just it's got a little bit of a quack to it, but not like over, too much quack. But it just no. has a un, a unique tone. So I wanted. Um, I wanted pickups that had character to them and not just like, oh, I guess they sound kind of like a single coil P90-ish type of thing. You know what I mean? Um, so I, I, I wanted pickups that when you heard them, you're like, man, this is a unique sound. Um, and that's what we went for. So when we went in, I wanted the first voice to be kind of based on um, the guitar with the Reverend pickups in it because I really, really liked it. So typically what happens in with the, with the, the voicing process with Fishman is that we'll have a shuttle instrument. So we'll have the ability to pop out pickups and pop the other ones in. And then we're able to, in real time, through the technology, start toying. It's, the, it's not modeling, but there is a preamp involved that re-addresses the coil, if you will, mm -hmm. and can able to voice it in a certain way. So typically what happens is we start off and I'm like, no, that doesn't sound anything like those other pickups. So the initial goal is to try to sound close to the other pickups to get what we like about those other pickups in the Fishmans. But then inevitably what happens is, is that we turn the corner and these pickups sound better than the ones that we're going for. It's happened every time that we've done these voicings. So by the time we got done, and you know, and it's a long process. It's like, you know, I'm like going, nope, that's not it. Nope, that's not it. Nope, nope. And I'm like, hey, oh, hey. And then all of a sudden, boom, there we are. Uh, and that's what we did. So, and then there's another scary thing is that after we did the initial voicing and you're just as sure as hell that it sounds great, then you don't play them for like four months because they're developing, yeah. you know, or, or three months or whatever the case may be. And then there's that, you know, the drum roll when you open up the case and you got to plug the thing in. Do these things sound as good as I remember? And then they're like, oh, no, they sound better. <laughs> they sound better than I remember. So it's been it's been really fun working with both Reverend and with Fishman because um, uh, expectations have been surpassed. So, um, yeah, there's well, that. the product is the product is great. And I guess it's kind of interesting. It's a slightly different take than what you had before, because. With the Gristle Master, voicing those pickups, I guess, was quite easy for you because you knew what you wanted. Because you're, I've always known you as a telly guy, so right. you had those reference points. But was there a is there a P90 guitar in your collection that you were kind of that you had in your head and you were trying to find it, or were you just sort of hunting around in the dark until you found the sound that you actually wanted? Uh, kind of, kind of both. So there were right. um, a few years ago when I got that '53 telly, uh, I was also going to buy this this '55 Les Paul. And, um, and I had it at the house and, um, 
and I was going to get it. But you know what stopped me from getting it was the fact that I would play the pickups and they sounded great, but, but this orange room is noisy as hell. I, I, I have to actually be pointed directly this way for it not to buzz like a banshee in heat. And, and I just thought to myself, I, I'm going to be limited as how many places I'm going to play this guitar because it's so noisy. But it sounded so good. So in my mm -hmm. mind, you know, that guitar was one of the, the benchmarks. Um, there was another sound. I remember uh, one time uh, Joe Bonamassa, I was, I was sitting in with his, his band, and I was waiting on the wings, waiting to sit in. And he did this slow blues, and he took out this, this uh, gold top Les Paul, and uh, he played that this blues and this and at one point they brought it way down and i heard that neck pickup sound just clean through an amp and i thought that's the greatest sounding thing i've ever heard so it was kind of it, it was in the ether what i wanted there wasn't a, a specific thing but there was a general vibe that i was going for i wanted a neck pickup that did that glassy thing with girth but with butter i know these are all technical terms and i wanted that weird squawky uh uh bridge pickup that when you added heat to it, it was just, it's a sound like no other. You know what I mean? When you got that yeah, P90, it and really you got is. some. I'll tell you what, just... I don't, you know, I don't know if you're the same with this, but I find P90s with, because I, when I was growing up and learning to play, and P90s were never really on my radar. It's like I came back to them as, the, as I found the middle ground between the single coil and the humbucker. That's, that's where they sit best. And I find that when you, t you talked about turning the volume down, most pickups, they kind of just come in like this. The P90, I find, it comes down like this, and then when it gets to a certain point, it goes outwards and becomes big yeah. again, but it's clean. Right. It's, it's a really weird, and credit to you and credit to the Fishman guys, you managed to get all that vibe and still have a pickup that doesn't hum. Because there's, yes. so there's so many people that say, well, that's part of the thing. The, the hum is part of the equation that gives it this openness and this breathiness. Obviously not, because you've right. done it. Well, that that's the thing too, I mean, I mean, I've got the 53 Tele. It sounds glorious, uh, but it's idiosyncratic as hell. The neck pickup sounds great clean. If you add any heat to it, it howls like a banshee. The bridge pickup sounds great, but it also, if I add a lot of, you know, it's a very limited amount of places I can play that, that instrument. It's great for what it is. I'm not gonna put my Fishman set in that guitar because it's a 53 Tele. But that being said, the whole idea of the noise is part of the tone. Okay, well, that's, for that thing, but if I'm going to play and do all the stuff I need to do as a professional musician, I need an instrument that can get all the sounds that I want to do and not have the superfluous sounds I don't. Um, and so that argument is is a little cork sniffery for me, you know, when people are like, well, that's part of the tone. I'm like, yeah, you get into a session that's not your band and you're being hired to yeah. come up with stuff and you're going, yeah, dude, that's part of my sound. Th that doesn't cut it. You know, or if you're going to do a YouTube video or an Instagram video, and all the comments are going to be, "What the hell is that noise?" Right, exactly, exactly yeah. correct. So I get it, and yeah, like I say, credit where it's due. You, you guys have pulled it off, and you've also got the um, the little secret button down here, which on the Gristle Master gave you a second, entirely different voicing. But am I right in thinking it works slightly differently with these pickups? This the second voicing. Yeah, it's. <sighs> It's a separate voice that's supposed to be just a little hotter. Is basically what it came down to. I don't think it's as it's uh, it's as drastic uh, as the the um, the gristle tone Christmas. T style pickups. You know, I mean that. Yeah. But you know, but we had more time. You know what I mean? I'm not I'm not going to say I'm disappointed with the way that this because it's totally functional and I use it all the time. Uh, but if, if we had more time to voice something, uh, if it wasn't for COVID, it might be a little bit more different, but as it is, it's totally functional and cool. I will say that there's, this gets a little convoluted, but, but not too much. Cause I think it all makes sense in the grand scheme of things. So suffice it to say, um, there, there are two different, there's two slightly different things that are available in this guitar or. The P90 set that's in this guitar functions slightly different from the standalone version that'll be coming later, but we can we can talk about that another time. Yes, that will be something we'll be talking about soon, folks. So stay tuned for that. Right. Yes, but today is all about the full package. The full package. Yes. So um. Yes. So yeah, we were talking about the voicing and how you you kind of 
you wanted it to be a little bit more discreet maybe on this guitar and just give you more of the same tone rather than two really distinct different Yeah, that's sounds. how it panned out. And, I, and, it, and it totally works. I mean, it's interesting on the other set, um, I, I don't, I only hit the other voice for, for certain things. And it's, and it's totally effective. Like if I'm on the neck pickup and I'm doing like a clean rhythm thing and then I'll break into like a clean melody and I just want a little bit more beef, I'll hit that button. And th these function the same way as well. Or if I'm in the bridge pickup and I'm doing something that's crunchy and it's lead time and I just want that little push over the edge, I hit that button. And this totally mm -hmm. functions in that same way. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, and it's such a great design because um, I, I put the the, the T pickups in, in my one of my T style guitars, and and love it. And I bought it because I thought this will be great for gigs because, like you said, you just want that little bit more. You want that lead boost. There it is. Uh, obviously, that's not been put into practice recently with gigs, but on recordings, you know, if you're in the studio and you want a little different texture, a lot of people do that with, you know, they'll change to a different pedal or a different amp or something. But just to have those different voicings is great because suddenly you've got two like two different um, characters, if you will, in the right. mix. Yeah. Exactly. And the same kind of thing is is here. I think you know just yes. a little bit more, a little bit more of a kind of linear progression between the two, maybe with the two right. voicings in this. Exactly. Good way of putting it. Yep. Cool. Um, the other thing I've got to ask you about, which really the the, the first thing I noticed about this and what impressed me the most is the neck. It's such a comfortable neck, and I find it, sometimes it it's hard for um, a, a gloss finish neck to always feel super comfy because you know sometimes you find it's got that peanut butter effect or something like that. But did not happen once for me when I was playing this guitar. What, what was there any kind of neck profile in mind that you had when you designed this with the Fishman uh, with the uh, Reverend guys, or did it just you know it's 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 funny. It just you know they knew. The neck profile that um, on the Gristle Master, I wanted just a little bit more meat than their conventional kind of T style, like Pete Anderson East Sider type of neck. I said, I just want a little bit more depth. And then we actually did another one later on with a lot more depth. But um, so they, they knew the general profile that I wanted. And so I don't, to be honest with you, I don't even recall talking about the neck shape on this thing. I, I really don't. I don't, I, I just remember him saying, Okay, this is what I want to do. This is the basic gist. I wanted to have this and this and this. You know, same radius. You know, if the neck profile. You know, I I can't even remember the conversation. And then I just remember getting it, just going, yeah, our work here is done. <laughs> you yeah. know, it was just one yeah. of those things. And when I, you know, to your point, when I felt the neck, it just it just felt totally at home. There was no, there was no reservations about it at all. Like everything was just, it's like this is perfect. This is what I wanted. And yeah. um, and that was that. But I I, I, know, I I didn't give them like a like a sample neck. I didn't you know right. I didn't or any of that kind of stuff. It was just kind of you know there was a general conversation about what I wanted, and then I got it. I was like, yeah, this is great. That's that's fine. I didn't expect you to say that because you know I've played a lot of different guitars, and they don't always come out this good when it's just the manufacturer just you know giving you whatever profile they think you want. This this seemed to me like there's a lot of thought gone into this. Maybe I'm overthinking it, but just to try and impress on anyone watching this who hasn't played these guitars yet, this neck feels like it's been sculpted to perfection. In, to be completely honest, and for you to hey, say let me, that, let me retract. Well, we worked we worked tirelessly to figure. <laughs> Yeah, take the, take the credit, take the credit, because um, I'm dishing it out. No, but it's just, it's such a comfortable guitar to play. And also, you know, it's not super heavy, because it's ch chambered, that, that Karina, was the, right? Well, the, there's a little bit of chambering underneath here, underneath this right. area here, which I've never mm -hmm. actually even seen. I just I just know it's there. But uh, the same thing with the original Gristle Master. Just underneath the pickguard here, there's a little bit of chambering. Other than that, it's a solid piece of Karina. And the... What's interesting about the kind of Firebird-esque middle section that's raised mm. is that, from what Joe Naylor was saying, is that the that would be what that raised section is. That would be the conventional thickness of a regular T-style guitar. So the rest of it's just recessed a little bit. So I think right, technically right. that helps mitigate the weight as well. So mm -hmm. there's that. Yeah, it's just it's super well balanced super well thought out and i think it's a great companion as well to the gristle master i think maybe people thought 
this is like you know version 2.0 maybe but it's not it's it's its own thing totally yeah, absolutely. I can, I can yeah, yeah. really see why you would use both absolutely they're totally different beasts and totally have their own purposes and and on the latest record you know I used used both of them for different stuff I mean there was it was totally oh, no I need this p90 thing on this tune whereas no I need the, the regular gristle master on this one and Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that, and those guitars are all over that record. But what's interesting is that I didn't have the new pickups then. I, th they were still the prototype Reverend oh, P90s right. on the record. So, uh, but now, of course, Very I'm cool. playing this thing nonstop on the new one. So we've got another new one coming. So Excellent. It's always so, something. I, yeah, well, I know you probably can't say, but what else might be coming? What else can we expect to see added to the, uh, to the Gristle lineup? Or are you, or are well, you a happy we man right now? Well, I am I am contented for sure. Um, <laughs> there's definitely been, I mean, needless to say, with um, both guitars, there is potential for doing permutations, you know, anything from adding a humbucker to the neck of a Gristle Master or adding a P90 to the neck of the Gristle Master with a tally bridge and maybe another pickup in between or certainly doing at some point, you know... Um, a stop tail piece on this or whatever the case may be. But for now, mm. I would say, you know, we got our hands full with what we got. So it, it's, yeah, it's going to be a while, but certainly I don't want to get you road. in any, um, in any kind of trouble or anything, but I just wondered if something was, um, you know, you were itching to tell us about something else, but I think uh, you, not, you not immediately. It's going to take a while happy. to, uh, it's, it's, it's going to take a while to kind of just, uh, fulfill, thank God, the demand for, for what we got going on thus far. So, uh, but yeah. we're getting there, and uh, and so far people are really. It's always very gratifying when people get these instruments and they they really dig them. So uh, that's been a lot of fun because it's it's you know it's always been about um, you know I guess you know not to I mean I'll just talk about from my point of view the idea of a signature instrument is it's got to be for me it's got to be about. Um, a tool for the music that you want to make that makes sense from an artistic point of view. I mean, yes, of course, there's there's financial uh, reward in having something that people want to buy that has your name on it. I mean, I'm not, you know, I, you got to eat. But the most uh, important thing for me was like, okay, ergonomically, this is what I want out of this type of instrument that hasn't been done yet. I mean, because mm -hmm. inevitably you get people who are like, well, if I want a real Telecaster, I'll do that. Or if I want, it's like, there is no real Telecaster that does what the Gristle Master does. Sorry. And there's no, no I don't, other I don't G get that argument with these. Um, I saw someone comment on one of our videos saying, that I'd rather just buy the real thing. It's like What's the real, the real thing, thing doesn't thing? exist. Exactly. This is the real thing. Right. So, I, don't, I don't get it. Well, you know, people online, what are you going to do? <laughs> well, exactly. <laughs> there's yeah. a lot of beautiful people online, but there's a lot of people who need a hug. Yeah. I'm sure, now I've said that, there's going to be another 10 comments on this video that say exactly the same thing. <laughs> well, you know, there, there has been people, oh, oh, real creative design. Like, you know what? Let, let, you can't win because if you do anything that deviates from the holy trinity of, you know, of what guitar, people are, or, you know, maybe there's more than a trinity, but, you know, there's this uh, dogmatic iconography of the classic guitar shapes that people yeah. are just so religiously attached to that if you deviate from like, but there's by only the same so token, much you can do. Exactly. And, but I think, you know, to, to reverence credit, I think there are other instruments that they make with their own unique designs are totally cool in a way that's new, but also yeah. re Absolutely, respectful. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? And so I think that this thing, even though the body shape obviously is reminiscent of a Telecaster, but it's different enough and ergonomically, the guitar does stuff that's totally different that um, I think makes it a, uh, a valid thing for me anyway. And that's the important thing. <laughs> Absolutely. Say no more. Sign off on that, my friend. It works very well. Yeah, no, it's a fantastic guitar, as is the Gristle Master. So anyone, you know, if you're watching, if you want more information about these, I don't know why you would, because Greg's given us everything. But head to our website down in the description below, peachguitars.com. You can see everything we've got. And we got the very cool Butter Squatch Blonde as well. Yes, which, which um, I, I took out here, which I enjoy immensely. I've used it quite a bit. That is a fine, fine piece. It's beautiful. It really is cool looking. You know, it's amazing. It's like, 
every time that we're like, well, I wonder what that would look like. It's like you see it in person. Like this is stunning. It's awesome. So I look just like we did the three tone sunburst. The three tone sunburst came back. I was like, man, that looks magnificent. So it's yeah. it's been a lot of fun working with Reverend because it's just it's just so the relationship is just because Ken and Penny are great. Joe Naylor's great. There's no reindeer games. It's like, hey, let's do this. Hey, we can do that. Hey, blah, 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 blah. And everything has just been easy peasy. So, and I mean, even, I even, the one, the, even the one hiccup we had turned out to be totally cool. You know what I mean? So Yeah. And I am confident that they would say the same about you. It's a mutual thing. It's a fun relationship both ways, I'd imagine. Well, we, I, I'd like to think so. So it's, it's all good. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, Greg. I think we've said pretty much all we've got to say. I think all right, cool. you know, no you've problem. got the facility to play that thing for us. Let me hear what it can do. In your All hands. right, you got it. So we could do a little bit. Let me pick here somewhere. So here's the neck pickup with clean sound. Without the phase shift, or not without the, I'm sorry, phase shift. That's this. I mean, without the, uh, <laughs> in phase. So here's the neck pickup, first voice. Here's with the button in. Before. Uh, just a little bit more meat and heat. Here's that bridge pickup, uh, just as is. Here's the button in. Here's, here's with the button in. So, as you can hear, it does it does it all by Jimmy. the idea that is one fat sounding guitar yeah it's and nobody can Daka. complain nobody can complain that they haven't heard all the tones it's got to offer because that was a fine demonstration of just about everything 
It does it all, by God. And, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, it's a little early here, but you, know, you do what you can. <laughs> it's never too early for that. <laughs> That's fantastic, Greg. Thank you so much for, uh, for showing us what it can do. As I say, folks, if you want any more info on that guitar, check the link in the description below and you can find it all on our website. And I don't need to tell anyone watching this video about Greg and to go and follow him. Everybody knows that. So you can check out the rest of the stuff that Greg's going to be up to uh, on his own channels, on the Wildwood channels, all that good stuff. Anything yes. else going on in, in your life, Greg, that we haven't um, uh, Just a brand new record wanna... out, Cock Marshall Trio from the Upna. That just came out a few weeks ago. So the, awesome. the, new, the new trio record is out and ready to go. And there, are also, there will also be a uh, Hal Leonard book of uh, my transcriptions coming out uh, June 1st, apparently. So, uh, Excellent. Transcriptions of tunes from my records from over the years so that'll be fun well i'd better get learning some well it's i'd better get working it's a, it's a dark and squalid place my friend but welcome <laughs> come i want to go there yeah <laughs> and hopefully hopefully we'll see you here in the uk in november as you say that sounds good hopefully we we'll won't see hold you, you to it but you know fingers crossed fingers crossed everything will pan out yes awesome all right thanks so much greg thank you very much everyone for watching Take care, and we'll see you soon. My pleasure. Bye-bye. See you later, Jack. Thank you. Cheers, Greg. See you, see you later.